I just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, I've made a decision that I won't be running for mayor in uh, October. I thought now would be the right time to make that decision. Uh, it basically gives other people 10, 10 months to prepare if they choose to, uh, to serve the city. And uh, you know, I've been, I've been privileged to serve as mayor for the last more than seven years and uh, I intend to fully serve the term. Uh, I'll be uh, working just as hard for the next uh, almost 10 months. And uh, I think it's just time for me uh, to, to retire. At, I'm beyond the normal retirement age uh, and for me to con contemplate another term probably isn't fair to me, my family, and uh, you know I think maybe Lethbridge needs a change too. So there's been lots of controversy over the last few terms, uh, uh, last term about uh, how we deal with social issues in the city. And I think uh, anybody running for city council in any capacity should have a vision and an idea about how to deal with those uh, social issues. I've said many times, um, many, the social issues that we're dealing with are not necessarily uh, municipal responsibility. We need to work with the provincial government to solve those. Uh, for my entire service as mayor, we've been asking for in-talk services, detox services, supported housing, and really haven't got anything of any significance from any provincial government. And we'll never solve homeless problems and addiction problems in our city without that kind of uh, cooperation. We'll need members on city council after November the 1st who are willing to work together, who can work, to, work as a team, uh, who don't try to impose divisive uh, philosophies on uh, one another uh, in order to access the services we desperately need from the provincial government. This, these services are ones we've been lacking in Lethbridge for many years. And it's time the provincial government addressed the needs in Lethbridge. So uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm pleased with many of the things that we've been able to accomplish as a council over, the, over my term as mayor. Uh, the largest single private investment in the history of Lethbridge, $430 million Cavendish. Uh, fantastic investment. Uh, the work that we've done, and I see Councillor Miyashiro is here. He chaired the... Uh, the committee for the uh, rec facility for, and uh, the ATB center. And uh, certainly that's the largest municipal uh, facility that we've constructed in the, hit, in the history of Lethbridge, the most expensive one at $155 million. I was uh, asked when the NDP government was elected what the highest priority was for the city of Lethbridge. And uh, it was uh, certainly a difficult choice uh, between, you know, we had the the, uh, the fine arts facility or perhaps Lethbridge exhibition. But anyway, the only one that was shovel ready at the time was the university. And I said, university shovel ready, go with that, even though it's not a municipal project. And that was a $250 million investment in the city. So uh, moving those things forward was important. More recently, getting the investment for uh, Lethbridge exhibition from the province uh, has helped and the city's committed to that as well in terms of investing in our future in a catalytic project. So the agri-food hub at the exhibition is a type of project that will encourage further private investment in our city. The investments in the airport are the types of investments that will continue to support private investment in our city. So we need to continue to invest in our economy. Uh, we need to make sure that there are jobs going forward. We have wonderful assets in the city of Lethbridge in terms of our educational institutions, the college, the university, our school systems, uh, the agricultural research center, and a vibrant, diversified economy. So I think those are uh, very positive things that our city can build on going forward. And I hope that we continue to emphasize those as a city uh, in the years ahead. We should all be proud of the city of Lethbridge and there's many detractors and many of those detractors live right here in the city. But we have one of the most beautiful cities in the province, if not the most beautiful city, with a wonderful river valley. We've got uh, great uh, facilities that people can use, a uh, great park system. Uh, the quality of life in the city of Lethbridge is second to none. And uh, people who continue to, to knock the city are doing us all no favors. Uh, we need to make sure that we're all advocates for the city of Lethbridge and we're all working together to solve the challenges we have. 
Yes, we have significant social problems. We've had them for decades, and they haven't been addressed. So we need to do that together. And we need, need to have a common vision to make sure that uh, as the city grows, that we're making sure that we, we're living our motto, that it's a place, uh, it's a gateway to opportunity for everyone that lives here. So uh, that's what I've tried to do as mayor, and that's what I hope our next city council will continue to try to do. So Chris, how long have you been considering um, this move to not run for re-election, and at what point would you say that you knew that you were not gonna run for re-election? Hmm. It's the Watergate question. What, what, do you, what did you know and when did you know it? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I, I would say prob probably most of the last six months. You know, I've just, uh, I think in 2020, that was a really hard year for me in terms of not being able to contact my family. I'm no exception. That happened to, uh, to everybody. So uh, no Easter. No Thanksgiving, no Christmas with my family, my kids, my grandkids. And uh, certainly I want to spend time with them. And uh, as the vaccines roll out, uh, we're supposed to be able to have access for most people by the end of the summer. And uh, that's a pretty happy coincidence for me that once everybody's va vaccinated, I'll be able to get to see my family again. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And I want to spend the time with them. I have uh, two of my sons live overseas. It'd be great to be able to, to travel to Australia and Japan and get to visit them. So uh, I'm looking forward to having more control of my free time and uh, time to spend with people I love. What are your priorities in the 10 months you have left? Uh, do you have, uh... Yeah, we have a capital budget. Uh, to, uh, so the work of council is, is not complete. Uh, we have a capital budget to review in May. We've done quite a significant reorganization of council and its committees, and uh, we have some policy issues that we want to deal with. Um, we were embarking on an advocacy initiative, and we'll have to see how that works. Uh, now the government is in a little bit of turmoil, but uh, we need to uh, make sure that uh, the needs of the, city, of the city of Lethbridge are effectively communicated. Uh, we really have a bit of a showdown coming next week on uh, Tuesday with ambulance dispatch. If the province goes ahead, it'll be a disaster. And uh, so uh, four previous health ministers have said uh, decentral uh, centralization of dispatch does not make sense. It's going to result in uh, lower service for cities like ours. And uh, we this this particular government and this particular minister is just ignoring that and uh, I've worked with with three other mayors to try and communicate that to the minister uh, I cannot see residents of the city of Lethbridge supporting this government if ambulance dispatch goes ahead so when it's all said and done and you're officially retired what do you hope your legacy as mayor will be I'm not worried about a legacy. I think uh, every mayor and every council tries to build on the work of the last council. The focus of this council has been economic development and trying to address our social problems, uh, trying to address things like reconciliation. That's been a major initi initiative of this council. So working with our indigenous people, again, it's a gateway to opportunity for everyone, regardless of race, color, uh, religion, creed, uh, everybody should have the same opportunities and that is our motto and uh, I think we've lived to that faithfully as a council and tried to create those opportunities for all. Chris, what would you say is your biggest contribution during your time as mayor and uh, second part, possibly do you have any regrets? Well, my regrets obviously are our lack of progress on social issues. Not being able to help with housing significantly. We do have a housing strategy. But getting support for it and getting, uh, making sure we don't have the tangible results. Uh, we've got 200 people minimum that are homeless in our city. Uh, the PAC team from the police reports uh, been reporting on a quarterly basis to say, uh, here we're in contact with these people. Here's all the significant issues that they're creating in the city and we can't provide them with regular support uh, in order to minimize uh, those harmful effects. So uh, we do need, uh, you know, the $11 million supported housing facility 
that was um, re-supported by this provincial government in January of last year has not begun construction. When it does begin construction, it's at least a year and a half away. So uh, not getting those things done is hurting our city and just prolonging the problems we're facing. So that's my biggest disappointment. Um, I think some of the successes, I think the ATB Center, fantastic. Uh, uh, the university, uh, you know, the support for the university and the university becoming the number two ranked under, undergraduate university in Canada, fantastic. Um, I think anything that really uh, promotes the city of Lethbridge, I think one thing that made me really happy was when I got to host the Midside City Mayor's Conference and the mayors came from across this province and stayed in Lethbridge. And they'd heard all these horror stories about the SCS and drug addiction. They stayed in the Lethbridge Lodge, uh, uh, the, the hotel, and we had the meetings in the, uh, in, the, in, the muse in the Galt Museum. And I took them on tours around the city and showed them what we had. And they were amazed. And they said, wow, you've got a bus terminal. Wow, look at that industrial park. We don't have industrial parks. And, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of things. And they were blown away with what we had. And all they'd heard was the negativism about Lethbridge. But uh, I can tell you my colleagues across the province thinks we have, think we have a fantastic city. Yep, I think uh, the new mayor is going to have to be somebody who can unite council. And uh, council has, to, you know, can you imagine how much further we might have been ahead if everybody was on council was advocating for the services that we need? If everybody was saying we need supported housing and instead uh, what was happening was people were promoting division in the community. And when you have a divided community, it's easy for the provincial government to do nothing. So what do you think next council's main priority should be moving forward next fall? Well, it's going to be multifaceted and they will develop their own strategic plan. I can't really tell them what they should do, but we will have challenges on the economic front. We will have challenges on the social front and we'll have to deal with uh, issues that this council won't be able to deal with before uh, the end of its term. Past the recent controversies, controversies and uh, social issues in the last couple of years contributed to you know, your announcement that, that you're leaving as Dr. Nope, no, but uh, I'm, you know, I'm a few years beyond when most people retire. Uh, I don't expect to live forever. I want to spend time with my family and uh, there, you know, I don't know how many years I have left. And I just want to make sure that while I have good health, I'm able to travel. Um, I want to make the best of those years and uh, enjoy some of my other interests. I think uh, I now, I'll, by, the, by the end of this term, I'll have provided 26 years of public service in the city of Lethbridge and uh, eight years on council, 18 years on the school board. I think I've made some significant contributions to both. And, uh, I've done that cooperatively with uh, people who I've served with, and uh, I have a great deal of personal satisfaction with that, and I have no regrets in terms of uh, choices to serve, but uh, every once in a while you have to take a look and say, is this a time to change, make a, a significant change? And I've always been, uh, I think, someone who's been progressive, and I think sometimes uh, you have to reassess everything and decide, uh, Coming up, now is the time to do things differently. And that's the decision I've made, that uh, in 10 months, I'm going to do things differently. Now, other than spending time with family and relaxing a little bit, kind of, what, what's next for you? Are you planning on staying involved on a smaller level? <laughs> I think I'm going to turn off my phone. <laughs> I think I'm going to, you know, I, well, I, I, if you ever see a letter to the editor from me, shoot me. Like, I just, uh, I'm going to disengage. And I'm going to, I've been spending more of my personal time now that, you know, in, in a strange way, COVID has given me more personal time because many of the events that happened in the evenings and on the weekends uh, that you attend as a mayor, uh, I, I haven't had to do those since uh, mid-March last year. 
and I've been uh, doing things like going hiking and, uh, and cross-country skiing and other things like that, enjoying the fresh air. And I really like that, you know? So uh, I get to do that with people who I care about, um, my partner, and, uh, and that certainly has helped a lot in terms of uh, managing any stress on the job, is that uh, I can turn off the switch on Friday Friday at the end of the day, go, go away for the weekend and uh, be out in the fresh air and uh, be rejuvenated on Monday. So uh, that's been good. And I expect that uh, when I don't know what day of the week it is in the future, that uh, that's going to be great for me. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I should answer that question. <laughs> uh, I think there are people in the city of Lethbridge who could be effective leaders. People who have cool heads, uh, balanced approach, and, and people who can bring others together. I think that's going to be important. And uh, so the purpose of me announcing today is to give those people time to think and prepare because it does take uh, some preparation. Uh, ideally, this council will uh, really not start campaigning, but some might, uh, be until we've completed our capital budget process. I think if the municipal election campaign goes from the 1st of June or the 1st of July until October, that's lots of time to inform uh, the public about what your strengths and weaknesses are and what your vision is for the future. I'd say any, anybody Anybody who's running, I think one of the biggest challenges, they'll have to lay out what their vision is to address the issues and challenges we have in the city, the ones that we haven't been able to address for the last eight years. Uh, how are we going to address poverty? How are we going to address homelessness? Uh, how are we going to address addiction? So anybody running in October, you know, those, there's no easy solutions to any of those, and we will have to work cooperatively with the provincial government to get solutions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.